Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. This video is just to share some information and um, really to consolidate, I think, what a lot of us already know, but information about the three different groups of starseed and light workers that came in answer to the call for volunteers. Now, this is a concept that I have been familiar with for some time, having read originally Dolores Cannon's book, The Three Waves of Volunteers, which is one of the first books that really helped me understand the concept of starseeds and light workers and volunteer souls and the earth and her ascension process. But I have been recently or more recently reading a book called The Divine Design by Laurie Ladd. Now, this is a brilliant book. I would highly recommend it if you are interested in this sort of field of reality. She talks about the history of Earth, how Earth started off in the fifth dimension, how she fell to the third dimension and how she is now in the process of coming back in to the fifth dimension and how so many of us starseeds and light workers are here to assist her in that process. What I wanted to talk about today in this video is just to briefly go over the three main groups. Now, it is always dangerous when we're talking about this sort of information to categorise and to label. And so please rest assured, I'm not trying to do that. It just struck me as quite useful to maybe help some of us understand the different roles that we might be here to play and to um, step into. So the two authors, Laurie Ladd and Dolores Cannon, have got very similar ideas. They talk about the first group being newcomers to our 3D reality. And Laurie describes them as the beacons of light. Now, I'm not going to get into dates because, again, it's quite dangerous when you start trying to categorise and specify dates um, because outside of Earth, we don't work with a linear timeline like we do here. But this initial group who are likely to be older now, they may have come sort of around about the time following the First World War when it became clear that Earth was had reached a crisis point and needed help to raise her frequency and vibration. Um, they came basically to hold the light. So they incarnated to hold the light within their physical body. Um, it wasn't necessarily a very active role. It was more a role where it's just about being, but they were here to hold the light in their physical body, to act as anchors and to um, really affect the earth and have an effect on sort of the people within their day-to-day -day reality. So if you feel that you may be in that earlier group and have felt that you were here for something important but that you weren't actually doing very much, the message is that just by being here you are fulfilling your mission and there is recognition of how hard it is and was to come into this physical reality to have a lifetime in the 3D realm, especially if you weren't used to the frequencies here. Um, it was very difficult, or it has been very difficult for this group to adjust to the densities in this planet, to work with emotions and some of the human um, sort of ways of being and realities. So the second group are referred to by Laurie Ladd as soldiers or warriors. Again, they are also possibly the indigos that you know speech shorts teachers speak of they came this second wave as sort of more awake knowing that they had a mission they they had something really important to do not always fully awake but certainly programmed to wake up at a certain point because it was important that they were awake in order to be able to fulfill their mission this is more of an active role and many of this group of course antennas they were channels they were light and space holders so they were absolutely here as with the first group to hold the light but they were able to hold larger amounts of light within their bodies so again to help that frequency frequency shift up a gear. I think it's important to acknowledge that this the whole ascension process is not something that happens overnight. It has been happening over eons of time. Certainly 
um, a long extended time period. And this is part of a greater plan. Now, the one of the biggest roles for this group is clearing density through the physical form. And by doing that, they enable themselves to shift into higher dimensions and everybody around them and the environment that they're in. So it is very much about clearing out density, transmuting lower frequencies, lower um more toxic energies and also helping other people to wake up. So they can often feel that they are warriors, they're on a mission, they have something really important to do here. It's not always clear what that might be, but they just have this sort of um, innate knowing that there is something that they have to do. They affect their environment just by being here, as with the first group, but they are more active in that a lot of this wave are actually, um, they are healers, they are teachers, they are writers, they are speakers, they are channelers, and they are basically very driven and so they want to serve and they are prepared to show up every day regardless of any backlash that they get they are dedicated to the job and um, often more on the front line but certainly um it, having a role that is more involved in physically shifting the energy now the third group Dolores Cannon does said or explained that they are often very misunderstood because they find it the hardest to be here because they are coming in on a much higher frequency with more DNA activated, with more awareness. Mo the majority of this group come in fully awake and fully aware and they are the pioneers or the trailblazers. They are here to bring in new earth. So the first group, the beacons of light, were the first to come. They were to sort of to or to support the start of the shift in frequency and the raising of energy. The second group were the warriors who had a more specific mission, a more active mission, but again, all about clearing lower frequencies out and awakening other people as they awoke. The pioneers are the ones who are coming in and have been coming in already fully awake. So they don't come through the veil of forgetfulness because they're more awake, because more of their DNA is activated. They can feel very lost and very at sea here because their frequencies don't match. Um, they find it really hard to understand the way humans work, how they behave, how they think. They can feel very disconnected as a result. But actually, they are here to operate in this higher frequency because by doing so, they shift everything and everybody around them into that higher state. So they're here to hold the light. They are here. They are bringing in new information, new access to technology, new wisdom that is needed. They have abilities that are already completely switched on. Um, they are designed to remember what things should be like here so that they can then start to align with that and create the new world. So this is why they're called the pioneers, because often they have not been on Earth before. So there is a real challenge for them to access and to acclimatize and adjust to the frequencies here. And a lot of these pioneers, this third wave, are being diagnosed with conditions such as autism, Asperger's, sort of high levels of sensitivity. These are the individuals that are struggling to cope with the frequency. They struggle because they are so in tune with what's going on. So they can read people's energy. They can read their minds. You know, they have telepathic abilities. And so they know what's going on. They are not here to fit into the mainstream. They are not here to be conventional. They're not here to fit inside the box. They are absolutely here to break the mold, to break the system, to bring in new ways of being, new systems, new ways of acting um, and new ways of leading life. Lives. It's really interesting because as I have been working on charts, I've been doing more charts for young people, particularly for parents who have got children who are struggling with the mainstream system, who are hypersensitive, you know, can't cope um, with certain foods, 
who just don't behave in the way that the sort of society in the mainstream expects them to. And when I look at their charts, they're often very high frequency souls and they are here to shake up the system, to challenge the system, because without them, nothing will change. You know, we need this almost like the little bringers of chaos in many ways, chaos because the mainstream system cannot cope with them and they have to try and find ways, they're trying to find ways to mould them in to fit in the system, but of course that's not why they're here. One of their biggest challenges is to work on their body because obviously they're coming in um, at the stage before the frequency is fully elevated so they are having to adjust and it is challenging for them but they are here to pave the way and to show us how things could be or rather should be when we manage to move out of the 3d world that we are currently or that we are moving out of right now so I hope that is interesting. Let me know if it resonates. Let me know if you feel aligned to one particular group. For me, certainly, I feel more aligned to the warrior, sort of the second wave of volunteers, having felt I had a very strong mission, but not knowing what that was. And now I'm um, feeling, yeah, I know that I'm here to help transmute energy and also to teach and share information in particular or I wouldn't be here. So I hope you find that interesting. I look forward to sharing more as we move through this whole process. Thank you so much for being here. 